Today, we're making arroz, easy and delicious meat stuffed pitas. Arroyas are Lebanese stuffed pita breads that are filled with lightly spiced and tender meat. Think of them as Lebanese burgers. They're a perfect weeknight treat because they only take 20 minutes to make, and unlike a regular burger, they're not crazy heavy. Today, I'll show you how to make the perfect arroyas filling. I will also discuss bread choice so you can get the right kind for you. Before we get started, I'm Obi, and I wanna get you cooking delicious Middle Eastern food at home. Consider subscribing if you'd like to see new step-by-step -step Middle Eastern recipes every week. Now let's jump right in. The meat filling for the arayis is actually really close to a kofta mixture. And to make it, we'll first need to make an onion and parsley mixture that we'll use to soften and flavour our meat. Start off by peeling and roughly chopping a medium brown onion. Split it in half and then into big pieces, as it'll go straight into a food processor. For the parsley, roughly chop 30 grams or one ounce of parsley and remove any large pieces of stalk. Add the onions and parsley to a food processor, or if you don't have one like me, a blender. Once it's all in there, add one tablespoon of olive oil, or if you can get it, 20 to 50 grams of beef fat. Then process it until it's all been well minced. You can of course mince this by hand, but this just saves so much time. Make sure to scrape down the sides of your mixer, and when you are done, you should be left with something like this. Try to make sure you aren't left with any whole parsley leaves or stalks. Next up, we need to mince one to two garlic cloves. Now I know some of you don't have a garlic press, so here's how you can do it with a standard chef's knife. Start off by peeling your garlic and removing the roots, and then give them a rough chop. Next, chop them into small pieces by rocking your knife back and forth. When the pieces are looking fairly small, add a little salt from the recipe onto the garlic and then using the back of your knife, scrape the garlic against the cutting board. The salt will act as an abrasive and will slowly start to mince the garlic. Scrape it back and forth a few times and give it a couple of chops and it will magically turn into soft garlic paste. With the garlic minced, we can put together the meat filling. And for that, you'll want to add 500 grams or one pound of minced beef to a mixing bowl. Try get minced with an 80 to 20 fat ratio. But if yours is lean, consider adding more olive oil or beef fat. You can of course use lamb instead of beef. To season the meat, we've got one teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of baharat or allspice, a quarter of a teaspoon of pepper, an eighth of a teaspoon of cinnamon, and a quarter of a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. Add it all to the meat. Next up, add the garlic you minced earlier. For sweetness, Add one and a half tablespoons of pomegranate molasses to the meat. Finally, add in your onion mixture. I was doing a double batch, so my bowl is super full. The only thing left to do now is mix it well. Knead the mixture until everything has been incorporated. And don't forget to scrape the bottom of the bowl as well. And when done, your meat mixture will look something like this. When it comes to the bread, you may have a choice between regular pita bread and thin Lebanese bread. Lebanese bread is the traditional choice, but unless you're cooking these on a barbecue, it's hard to keep them crispy. And so pita may be a better option. You'll need about five to six loaves of the kind you choose. To prepare the pita for filling, microwave them for about 30 to 60 seconds until they just start to steam, and then slice them in half. If yours are a circle rather than oval, go ahead and slice them into quarters. While they're still hot, work a knife between the two sides of the bread and then spread them apart till they form a pocket. If your pita isn't fresh, you may struggle to do this. So try and get them on the same day you'll make this. For the Lebanese bread, just slice it into quarters and then separate the sides. No microwaving needed. But once again, it needs to be fresh. To stuff them is pretty simple. Just add a few tablespoons of the filling into each piece of bread until it's about halfway full. And then use your hands to massage the meat filling to the edges of the bread. Your aim should be to have the meat just under one centimeter or a third of an inch thick for the pizza bread. If necessary, add more meat so they're full to the edges. For consistency, I'm cutting one edge off of my pitta 
so that they open the same way as the Lebanese bread. When filling the Lebanese bread, aim to have the meat about half a centimetre or a sixth of an inch thick. Now to get a nice and charred flavour similar to that of a grill, we can employ a little trick and brush the bread with olive oil. This will do two things. First, it will give the bread a light fry, so it will crisp up better. And second, as the oil heats up and begins to burn, we'll get grill marks where the bread touched the pan, and that will give us our grilled flavour. I suggest being generous with your olive oil, and make sure to get both sides of the bread. With the oiling done, we're ready to cook our rice. Now these are usually cooked on a grill, but if you live in an apartment like me, I highly recommend a grill pan. Preheat your pan on medium high, and then add your arroz. You'll know they're ready on each side when they start to make a loud sizzle and splutter sound, which for me worked out to 4 minutes per side. When you get to that stage, flip them over and let them sit for the same amount of time till cooked on the second side. Once they're nice and charred all over, take them off the grill and plate them. If you're doing the Lebanese bread then it's the exact same thing, except mine took about 2-3 to three minutes per side instead. To serve, I've plated mine with a simple parsley and onion salad, and here's how they turned out. So this one is the Lebanese bread, and because it's so thin, when it was cooking it got a bit soft. This one is the pita, and because it's slightly thicker, it stayed crispy when it was frying. My personal preference would be for the pita because I prefer the crisp, but I think they both work great. Now it's time for the taste test. So as I guess, my favourite is the pita one, and that's because the crispy bread is the perfect texture that complements the meat. The Lebanese bread works really good as well if you're a fan of something like steamed dumplings. Um, it's really soft and it absorbs a lot of the flavour of the meat. The meat itself tastes delicious and cooking the arroyos in the griddle gave them a really great charred flavour. And considering how little time it takes, I really think you should try it. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like, share and subscribe as it really helps the channel. As usual, all the ingredient amounts and directions are in the description box below and I'll be back next week with another recipe.